Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, today's video, we're going to be doing the Bronco letters, the light-up Bronco letters that uh, that you see online on Amazon. I believe there's an Oracle set, too. Uh, got these pretty cheap on Amazon for about 100 bucks. Uh, we're going to do this install, take the old letters off, take the grill off, show you how to do all that, put the new letters on, wire it up. Um, I'm going to wire mine to an aux switch so I could turn them on and turn them off. I don't need them on all the time every time the car is running. Um even though that's what the instructions say, but uh, I'm gonna put it to an aux switch and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get going. So here's what comes in the kit. I uh, got this on Amazon, like I said, for about a hundred bucks. You got a wiring harness, um, each of the individual letters plug into that. Um, it does come with a power and a fuse jumper. I'm gonna disconnect this and go right to an aux. Um, and then uh, uh, ground negative, which will also go to the aux in my situation. Um, does come with uh, the letters. They look to be pretty identical. Uh, the only difference is they do light up. So B-R-O-N-C-O. -O. They give you an extra K. I'm guessing for copyright reasons, they need to put the K in there. Comes with uh, some wiring clips and uh, some clips that actually go and fasten the letters onto each of the locations. And then this little tool will help press, which we'll show you later as well. Um, so stay tuned and we'll uh, get rolling on taking the grill off. So here we go. Here's the first step. We're going to be taking these uh, Bronco letters off. Okay, I'm going to make these light up. Uh, I'm going to be putting it to my aux switch, aux beam aftermarket um, switch, so I can turn them on and turn them off when I want to. Um, the first step to removing the grill is going to be these... Uh, push clips. Um, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine push clips that you're going to have to take off. Um, we'll probably use a combination of uh, one of these guys. If you don't have one of these, you'll probably also use a flathead screwdriver as well. So we'll get uh, rolling on that and we'll be back. You can see here, we pry this up here about that height and then we can just kind of remove it from the bottom pretty easily and then you're gonna do that uh, for the nine different ones so the next step is going to remove this uh, air scoop we're gonna push down here and remove that once you get all the clips out this just lifts out of place and then we're gonna have to remove some of these hex bolts and we're gonna have to disconnect if you have a front camera and washer, those are the lines. We're gonna have to disconnect those as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Next, we're gonna remove one, two, three, four 10 millimeter hexes. Um, pretty easy to do here. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to take all those screws out, put them to the side, and then the next thing we have to do is uh, disconnect uh, the water line if you have a front camera and the actual camera uh, feed. So for this brown, okay, so for this brown one, I'm going to use a screwdriver. I made it a little bit easier. I'm going to push this tab in and then release and do that. Okay, and then for the water line, you're just gonna pinch the two parts that are wider together. I don't know if you could see that. And then they come, see it's a little bit oval. So it goes in like that. And you pinch the two sides together to release the retaining clip. Also, if you have a front license plate bracket, you will have to remove that uh, to get this off. Um, I really just pried this back lightly and it popped right out. Uh, we'll continue to do that because there's one clip on this side, maybe two, um, and then probably two on this side, and then there's a couple across the bottom as well. So we'll show you how to do that in a second after I remove the uh, license this, plate. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but really just a light push, pull, and it really gets rid of all the uh, clips that are holding it down. It's really just the corners that need a little bit of extra oomph to get them out. And there you have it. 
we got the grill off no problem that's what that looks like and uh next step will be installing the um we'll be taking the lights the bronco letters off putting the new ones on we'll see what that entails and then we'll reinstall everything uh, but we're going to be doing the rest of this on the inside because it's a uh, blistering 95 degree day here in New York. So stay tuned. Next, we're gonna have to move T, uh, three T, I don't know, these are either 30 or 35s. One, two, and then there's one behind here, uh, right under here. We have to move these um, to get this off so we can access the, uh, what, I guess the B, R, O, O and the N in the middle. So we'll have to do that. Sorry, but I really missed, uh, had a malfunction with the video and I thought I was taping, but I didn't. Um, what I would consider the hardest part of the whole process is getting the letters, the Bronco letters off of the grill. Um, putting them on, the new ones are very simple. But in the next little clip, you'll see a chisel that I used, a very sharp DeWalt chisel uh, to get the excess plastic. It's like they melted the backside of the letters on in order to keep them in place and you have to kind of chisel out uh, the plastic in order to pop the um, letters back out the front. Um, so you'll see the chisel that I used, you'll see the uh, plastic residue, but unfortunately I didn't get the video, um, even though I thought I did, so I apologize for that. But um, if you have any questions, drop me a line. I've seen other people uh, do uh, drill them out because um, really you're not gonna be able to use the letters again once you take them off. Um, the stock, you know, uh, letters that come with it, you're not gonna be able to use those again. So I don't even know it really matters, you know, what you use to get the letters off. Um, and I really don't see any reason why you'd ever go back to non-lit letters. So um, non-issue, um, use a drill uh, with a small drill bit, maybe drill them out. Um, but like I said, I used a chisel and just worked around the plastic to get all the excess plastic off. And then the letters kind of popped right through the front. It was pretty easy once you got a hang of it. Um, so you'll see it in the next clip, but again, sorry, I didn't get it on camera. All right, so I got all the letters in. The easiest thing to do is this tool comes in, right? You just put the little uh, metal thing over the pin. And you just give it a little tap until you hear it solid. And honestly, it seats them all, and they're all really, really tight. And then you're gonna go ahead and uh, reinstall this, the camera and whatnot with the three screws. And then we'll go ahead and bring it back out and get everything working. All right, so we're still inside because it's hot as you know what outside. It's about 95 degrees. We got all the letters in. We got the uh, washer and everything fastened down. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach this wiring harness, okay? Um, you're gonna to wanna to start the first connection with the B, right, in Bronco, R-O-N-C-O. -O. You're gonna to wanna to end with the O so that your long part of the wire is ending on the right side of the vehicle on the battery side when you're looking at the front or the driver side. You're gonna want it at the O, which is gonna be the driver side, because then you can connect that to your battery or aux switches or whatever you need to connect it to. So just make sure you do it that way before you put it back on. So we got the first two connected, the B, the R, the O. These really only go in one way. Um, so what I do is I just lightly place them here and eventually you'll feel it slot and there it is. And then you just push and that's pretty much it. Um, that one I got lucky, right? And we got the last two. There you go. And there you go. Okay, so now we're all wired up there. They give you these little clips uh, that you can uh, put uh, where you want them in order to keep the wire uh, nice and tidy. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I wanna put that. All right, and there's the finished product. We put one there. Then I ran the wires underneath where the camera and stuff is. That actually acts as a nice little retaining clip itself. And I put one here and one here, and then we'll see. And you'll see that I got my pigtail 
on the right side where the O is, or on the driver's side, and we'll go ahead and bring it back out, and hopefully not, uh, hopefully it'll go pretty smoothly. All right, now we're back at the truck. Go ahead and put the grill back in. Again, you have the two clips on this side, about four or five down the bottom, and two on this side. They're just push clips, you just push them into place. I reinstalled the license plate. Now I'm getting ready to do the 10 millimeter, the four 10 millimeter that hold the top of the grill. I set my chuck on my grill so I don't over tighten. I ran the wire out this side, as I said, where the O is. So now we got it coming under through those clips. And then I tucked it in behind the, the flashlight and then underneath this little piece here. And then we got it, the positive and negative over here that I'm gonna hook to this aux beam switch in here. All right, we'll do that in a minute. So we got those four clips in. Now we're gonna get the plastic piece that we took off that has all those clips. Actually, hold on. We're not gonna do that quite yet. We're going to reconnect the camera and the washer uh, by pushing them, the two clips together, um, which maybe you'll be able to see here. There we go. So that's that. And that's that. Nice and easy. And now, gonna go ahead and put this in place where well, that's exactly what I didn't want to do is lose a clip so we'll have to find that in a moment um, and then we'll just fasten these all back in um, once we're done and we're gonna have to go ahead and fasten the air scoop Push that right in there. And then we got a clip that goes there to hold that in place. And then we got all those in. I'm missing one. I guess I'll get one next time I go to the Ford dealer in a couple weeks. But that's that. Okay. We got no more parts. All we have to do now is complete the wiring. So this is what the inside of my aux beam switch looks like. You got two, four, six, eight switches. Right now I got a DRL and a uh, pod light switched individually, so you can do a low beam or a high beam on that. And I also got my rear tail lights hooked up to another one, which are those guys right there. They will either be red backlit or bright white when you're backing up, which is kind of nice. And now we're gonna have this uh, fourth one. I think I'm gonna put it to either the five or a 10, but we'll uh, come back and figure that out. So I ran that wire. Here's the wire for the letters. And I put it on this five amp, positive, negative. I'm gonna tuck all that back. Um, the five amp seems to be working. Um, although the kit came with 10 amp on that accessory. So I may have to change this to a 10, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, the five might be enough. Uh, hopefully it is. Um, and uh, yeah, they work pretty nice. So that's them off in the daytime. Now we can come in the vehicle. And I have my off switch. switch mounted up here my 5 amp is the blank one which I'll label in a minute and then in the daylight even in the daylight it's pretty bright uh, which I'm really shocked at to be honest with you um, we'll do another video when it gets night nighttime and we'll see it with and without the headlights so there it is I actually decided since the kit came with a 10, it probably needs a 10. So I just swapped out this five for a 10. I had one lying around. So now we're uh, good to go. And again, we'll just show you the video at night once it gets a little darker. 
All right, so that's what it looks like with the car on, Bronco lit up, and the lights, fog lights, and everything during the day. Do the same thing at night to give you guys a reference. I think this thing's gonna look pretty sick once it's all lit up at night. Yeah, so it's nighttime. This is a little hard to pick up. I can't even do it justice, but this looks pretty amazing. Uh, even my wife, who's not usually impressed by these sort of things, thinks it looks pretty great. Unfortunately, because it's night out, it's hard to make out, but it really does look and shine. Uh, the Bronco is brighter than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, and I really think it looks really nice. Um, and I'm very happy with this install for a hundred bucks. So to sum it up, I would say all in all, I'm pretty happy with the install. Uh, didn't take too long. Did a couple of breaks, maybe all told hour, hour and a half. Um, I am pretty mechanically inclined. So, you know, I might do it a little bit faster than somebody who's not. Um, I also have a lot of tools that are at my disposal that I can use. Um, so all in all, it was a pretty easy install. Like I said, the letters were the hardest thing to get off the grill. Um, the rest of it, the wiring, putting the new letters on, uh, getting the grill off, that's all pretty easy. Um, it's just getting the letters off the way forward and installed them. Like I said, it's like they melted the back um, in order to fasten the letters, which I don't know, didn't make a ton of sense to me, but um, is what it is. But pretty happy with it, um, honestly. And for the $100, it's, it's, uh, it's a great little uh, addition um, uh, to the Bronco. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please click like, subscribe, drop me a comment. If you have any questions, I'll be, I'll respond as soon as I can. Um, but, uh, keep, st stay tuned, subscribe, cause I will have more content for Bronco and other things, uh, as well. So thanks. Have a great day.